Hi, I'm Adam. This is the Machine Tech video blog, and today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about taps. In another video, we went over some screw thread basics, but we only alluded to the methods used to generate them in actual parts. We described screw threads in terms of how they work, but they're not typically manufactured by taking a long wedge and then wrapping it around a cylinder. Instead, they're either built into the shape of a mold for cast parts, or they're formed by pushing or rolling material into the desired shape. Or, more often than not, grooves are cut into solid material in order to leave the screw threads behind. Today we'll be focusing on taps, which are one of the most commonly used tools to cut internal threads in holes. We'll also be talking a little bit about tap drill selection, although the actual procedure for hand or machine tapping will be covered in a different video, as will cutting external threads using the tap's close cousin, the die. A tap is really just a screw that's been hardened. The idea is that when this screw is assembled into a hole in a softer piece of material, it will simultaneously cut whatever thread is on the screw into the part. You can actually make one yourself by getting a piece of high carbon tool steel, cutting some threads on it, and then heat treating it. This is a handy trick for odd, non-standard threads, but most of the time you'll use readily available, commercially sold taps. There are many types of commercial tap for almost every conceivable purpose, such as pulley taps with long shank extensions to get it difficult to reach holes, tapered pipe taps, taps for various thread forms like acme or square threads, and of course, the standard straight tap for cutting B threads. Standard taps come in a few different styles, with the most common being straight flute taps, gun taps, and spiral flute taps. Straight flute taps are good, general purpose taps for hand or machine operation. They have two or more axial relief grooves or flutes to provide free cutting action and a place for chips generated during the cutting process to accumulate. One important consideration in selecting straight flute taps is the lead chamfer, or the gradual increase in diameter at the start of the threads. There are three flavors, taper taps, bottoming taps, and plug taps. Taper taps have a relatively long lead chamfer, usually between seven to 10 threads in length. This helps to distribute the cutting force over a large area. It helps the tap to center in the hole and it helps the tap to start cutting. This is fine for through holes, but when cutting threads in blind holes, meaning holes which do not go all the way through the part, taps with shorter lead chamfers are beneficial because they cut more full threads at the bottom of the hole. Bottoming taps have a lead of only one to two threads, which makes the cutting forces more concentrated, but which allows the tap to produce full threads closest to the bottoms of blind holes. Plug taps with a lead chamfer of about three to five threads are usually a happy medium if you're only going to use one tap for the job, but there's nothing stopping you from first going in with a taper tap and then finishing the bottom of a hole with a bottoming tap. In addition to straight flute taps, there are also gun taps or spiral point taps, which have straight flutes, but the cutting face of the first few threads is relieved at an angle. This gives the tap an even better cutting action and pushes the chips forward to keep the flutes from clogging. This makes them really ideal for through holes. And the third common style of tap is the spiral flute tap. Spiral flute taps are designed for blind holes because they evacuate chips up the flutes and out of the hole like a drill. If you look at a commercial tap, you'll see some information listed on the shank. This will include the major diameter and the number of threads per inch. Some taps are made out of carbon steel, but high quality taps will be marked with an HS or HSS to indicate that they're made out of high speed steel, a highly alloyed tool steel that actually retains its hardness even at the very high temperatures generated by production cutting processes. These taps might come with an unfinished or bright surface finish. 
or they might come with a black oxide finish to help lubricant adhere to the tap and prevent galling or smearing of the material. They might also come with an additional surface treatment with some type of coating material like titanium nitride, titanium carbonitride, or titanium aluminum nitride to further improve the wear resistance of the tap. High quality taps will further be marked with a G to indicate that they were precision ground to finish size to ensure accuracy. And the final bit of information is the pitch diameter limit. An L indicates a pitch diameter lower than the basic pitch diameter of the thread, and an H indicates a pitch diameter higher than the basic pitch diameter of the thread. The letter is followed by a number, usually between 1 and 11, that specifies the amount of departure from the basic pitch diameter in increments of 5 ten thousandths of an inch. You can use this information to control the fit between a threaded hole and its mating component. For example, the most common limits are H2 and H3, which are one and one and a half thousandths of an inch over the basic pitch diameter, respectively. They will produce threads with a class two general purpose fit for fasteners. Higher pitch diameter limits are for large holes or looser fits, or where the parts are going to receive additional treatments after the threads have been cut, which will result in material expansion or buildup, like heat treating or plating. The tapping process always begins by cutting a hole, usually with a drill that's close to the size of the minor diameter of the specific threads that you want to generate. In order to help you select the correct tap drill, you can buy one of these wall charts, although tool suppliers also like to give these away as promotional items, so try to score one for free if you can. According to this particular chart, the generally accepted tap drill size for a half 13 thread is 27 64ths of an inch in diameter. If you don't have a wall chart, it's fairly easy to approximate the correct size of tap drill by taking the major diameter of the threads and subtracting the pitch. The pitch of a half 13 thread is one inch divided by the number of threads per inch, or in this case, about 77 thousandths of an inch. A half inch minus 77 thousandths of an inch is 423 thousandths of an inch. Now just go find the drill with the closest size to that number, which just happens to be 27 64ths, or 422 thousandths of an inch. By the way, the same trick works for metric threads, but it's even easier because metric thread specifications just give you the pitch. No conversion necessary. It's important to know that the tap hole size will always be a little bigger than the minor diameter of the tap itself, measured at the roots of the threads on the tap. This will remove a portion of the crests of the internal threads. The tips of the threads really don't add much in the way of strength, but removing them will greatly reduce the cutting forces on the tap, and that will reduce the likelihood of breaking the tap while cutting. Most wall charts in the tab drill calculation method we just outlined will provide about 75% thread depth. Since snapping off taps and holes and then having to go fish them out is second only to getting punched in the face on my personal list of most hated things, I'm more than happy to drill my holes a little oversized to compensate. Well, that's your basic introduction to taps. Their operating principle, the main types and styles, how to decipher their markings, and how to select the correct tap drill. And that's it for today from the Machine Tech video blog. I hope you learned something.